Well, hello everyone, this is Christian Vega here presenting the first video of this series of interviews and the very first one is with Dr. Alberto Rojo. Alberto Rojo is a physicist, he's a professor in physics at the Oakland University in Michigan. He's a researcher, he has a remarkable career as a scientist, he has several publications and also he has worked and published with Nobel Prize a winner in physics. But also he's a musician and, and he's a composer and he has record albums and going tours with top uh, musicians and, and artists in the world. But as remarkable as this is, it, it doesn't stop there because he's also a science communicator. He has published several books and articles and gave conferences all around the world. And the reason why he was my very first choice for interview is because I find his life and his approach to, to, to his profession extremely inspiring. And this is what this channel is about. It's about people that I find inspiring, people that I want to learn more. It, it happened to me and probably happened to you as well that you came across with people along your career that you say, well, I would really like to learn more about this person. I would like to learn more about his or her lessons learned in life, uh, what they consider important, the books that they recommend, uh, what advice they can give me, and, and, and things that the storytelling out of their life and lessons learned that, that, that I really want to learn from them. So uh, this YouTube channel is about interviews with people that I find inspiring, that I find interesting, and I want to learn more about them. So I hope you like it as well. I hope you find these people inspiring and you can learn from them as well. And please, if you do, don't forget to subscribe and thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Alberto, for, for being here with My me, pleasure. virtually be here with me and for your time. Yes. Uh, sure. it's, it's a pleasure for me to, to talk to you again after, after some here. years. So basically, just to, just to put in context a little bit, you are a researcher, you're a professor, you're a scientist at uh, Oakland University in Michigan right now. Right. Uh, in your career as, as a scientist, you have published several papers. Actually, at least one you have published with a, a, a physics a Nobel Prize physics physics winner Tony Leggett, uh, yes, exactly. And but but that's 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 not the limit of, of your of your professional life in a way because you're also a, a musician. You you compose your music. You play the guitar extremely well in a professional level. Uh, you have you have different albums, six, seven, right? Uh, well, it depends how you count, but uh, yeah, I have several uh, of my own. I have three. And then I participated in several other albums, but uh, yeah. And with, with really measures, at least for, for Argentina, for the world, because Mercedes Sosa was an international star, yeah. but uh, Pedro Aznar, Charlie Garcia, epic names, in, at least in Argentina. For yes. sure, you, you, you've been recording playing with them. Yes. Uh, and and that's, that's, that's an impressive career, just also as a musician. Thank you. Then you also, you also paint. Mm -hmm. Right, you, yeah, I see some paintings uh, uh, sometimes yeah. in your social media, but that's even not 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 all. You also are a science communicator. You have several books that you have published. Uh, you have written more than one hundred articles for at least for the main, uh, most important newspapers in at least in Argentina, probably in other places. You also have your series of videos uh, that is called Physics Under Quarantine or, or yes. some translation like this. That will be uh, that that experiments to do in your own house to learn about physics. Um, the the first question that comes to my mind is, I mean, you have twenty four hours like the rest of us, unless mm. gravity is different in your house. I don't know, but, but how on earth you 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 are able to produce so much? What's the secret? <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I think that in my case the secret is curiosity and passion. I I. It's it's kind of a curse also to be extremely curious because I've uh, I have lots of interests and I want to pursue them and uh, and I focus a lot in what I really like and that's I don't I've uh, I've been happy to be able to orchestrate my life in such a way that I don't do anything that I don't like to do um, so I have minimal commitment requirements in my university and. Uh, which is part of it. I sort of enjoy them because it's part of my of my task. But I try to distribute my day in in uh, with a with a lot of um, tr do what I what I like. And I I've developed certain disciplines that which I learned from people that are 
since I have a lot of freedom in my time, so I, it's it's kind of a, you have to come up with certain methods to deal with your time and. But, can, can uh, you share one of them? Can you share a key? Oh aspect well, there, I don't know. There, there are <laughs> things that I use, but uh, the the Pomodoro technique, which is very very famous, and uh, uh -huh. and I apply it a lot, and uh, I even gave a, a real Pomodoro to my to my daughter. Uh, it comes with from the Pomodoro timer for. Uh, for cooking right yeah, yeah. Um, so i put the timer in certain intervals i usually do 25 5 for practicing or for writing or 48 12 when i'm doing something else and uh, it's uh i love the idea of doing just one thing in a certain interval of time and basically what i do is non-stop so if i'm writing of course if i'm working on a paper you go back and forth in thinking about the problem but it's mostly for writing or things that I, I know that I have to write a chapter in this next couple of weeks. And so I even have a method that's probably crazy, but I have a, in my notebook, I have, I draw the tomatoes and I color them every time I complete one. Right. <laughs> so I have pages of, <laughs> so I say, I have to write this chapter. So that's going to take me like 25 tomatoes. And so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so I say, when I allocate that time, but it's a it's one it's i don't know how re replicable or translatable to other people these methods are because it's basically my way of doing what i really like and not and trying to and i'm always as all, as everyone trying to come up with idea methods to o overcome procrastination right and so okay. the basic um uh, method is to try to, to start and once you start you play, you push play, right? In three minutes, you're in love with what you're doing. So the, the crucial point is just press start, right? Start, yeah. Force yourself to start. Force and yourself you, to start. You, you kind Force of make like a one thinking process at the time. So you yes. start one thing, yes. you, you yes. Yes. finish that, yes. that no task. No multitasking. Parallel. No, okay. no, no, no. Multitasking is bad. <laughs> multitasking is evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I learned from my own experience and I read. I mean, if you're doing one thing and then reading, on a, your IQ goes down by 20 points. Right? <laughs> so, um, and, and even when I write, I don't even listen to music. I love because music distracts me. It's like a conversation that I'm. Uh, Indeed. I that's also follow. happens for me. Yeah. I, I used to have to a colleagues at university that I used to study with. Heavy metal, and I could never do something like that. Yeah. No, no, no. You no, because it distracts you. And then even yeah. when you exercise, right? Exercising with music is supposed to be not as productive because you have to concentrate on what you're doing also. Yeah. And I, I sometimes in the gym, I see someone in the bike with a book and listening to music. And I said, Impressive. You're, you're wasting your time. <laughs> you're wasting your time. <laughs> no, and uh, so I'm. Uh, so I, I try I try as the uh, to to be disciplined. I um, I don't succeed in being disciplined, but I really feel that I I can. Uh, and, so, and, and it's also the, I think the key point, the key concept is passion, right? To be in love with what you're doing, and that increases your focus and and the self confidence that you're able to finish something or to learn new things. Uh, yeah. I fully agree. I think that actually passion is what really makes the difference. In, in yes, the, in that's the it. Yes. And coming to that, I was, I was, I want to ask you, how will you define Alberto Rojo? But before you answer me that, I would like to give you my view, and you let me know if it makes sense to you. I will say that Alberto Rojo is a very, very curious person yes. who actually is fascinating about nature in all its forms. How far is that? It's my very accurate. Well, uh, uh, what did you say first? Uh, uh, curious and fascinating. Yes, uh, absolutely. That's the. You, you will say it's a good definition for yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. That's like, thank you for the definition <laughs> because I agree and I feel that every day, right? Everything is a miracle and, uh, every, and, and the world is beautiful. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what makes me paint, what makes me write, what makes me think about the world and, um, and try to communicate my own ideas. But um, yeah. And, and curiosity to, to, and to uh, and also trying trying to I'm a I'm a doer so I like to uh, when I and it could be it could be good or bad right because if, if I see something that I really like if I enjoy music I want to I want to be able to 
no, what is this guy doing that's making that's moving me so much? But how does the process work to learn to play an instrument? I want to see a painting or a drawing that I, it really fascinates me. I say, how do you do that? And I like food. I mean, I, when I go to a restaurant, I say, how do you make this? <laughs> yeah. So I like um, experimenting, even though I'm a theorist, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, so we, uh, we, sh we should tinkerer. wait for your 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 uh, full section. <laughs> <Not your. laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> but I've, I've been cooking along for a long time, and mostly uh, under the influx of my physics colleagues and my teachers in uh, in Balsaid. <laughs> they were all very good teachers that were good cooks as yeah. well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Good and to be honest, I think that this is. Uh, I think that the reason why I, by because why you agree with my definition of your view basically is, is because it's obvious for us. You you, you basically are all this. This is how you show in your work, in the things that you do. Is is your your really okay. passion about about nature, about curiosity, about learning, and, and and trying to understand what what's behind things and how things work. Yes, and and that's uh, I must say that that's been inspiring for my life as a professional, and, and I'm sure it's been inspiring for us as well. Okay. So thank you, thank you for that's an honor for sharing this. And saying. I would like to ask you a little bit about your your early life and 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 basically your 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 life as a child in your childhood, but also the role of your parents, and of course the role of all our parents are very important. But how do we? What, what would you really let's say? Say okay, this this is this is the main thing that helped me in my life, helped me in my career. That I learned from from my father, from my mother, that influenced my decisions, or in a professional way, of course. Right. My parents were were. I mean, I'm a clear. I'm a result of, of my parents. I mean, in, in the good, good and bad, right? Uh, they really um, they were responsible for giving me self confidence and being and, and overcoming difficulties and 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 uh, from an early age they told me you are capable of doing everything, right? And if if I if I stumble upon something, you're gonna solve it. You're you're the best. Right? Of course, every every parent says that to your kids, but they they were hammering me with that idea that I was. That was good. That was capable. There were no mistakes. You could so. And then on top of that, they um, they were also educators, and they were very well. I mean, so that's that's a privilege to have had by at random those parents because I was exposed to cultural ideas from a very early age. So uh, I read books when I was very young, and I knew painting from painters. I would recognize music and artists from a very early age, and I knew. They would, I mean, they used the uh, fire hose technique with me, right? They would throw a lot, and I would as able to assimilate some things, and others I couldn't. But, but I knew that there was something interesting to learn. But my dad, for example, he explained me the theory of relativity when I was very young, and I was fascinated with the idea. I was eleven, and then I went to, to tell that to my to my uncles and at Sunday. And when I started explaining it to them, I realized that I hadn't understand. That they didn't understand anything. I, could, <laughs> I couldn't replicate the explanation, but I got the fascination. So I, it's, I think that was the point when I said, "I want to learn this. I want to know why is it that it's so that it." I mean, I was a kid, but I, I realized that there was something very interesting to find there, and uh, and that uh, and that understanding those concepts enriches the mind and. So it's the trying to, yeah. Your, your father was a philosopher, right? Or um, yes, he's a <laughs> philosopher. Yeah, at that time he was practitioner in philosophy of science for until I was I don't know twenties, or and then he moved gradually to linguistics and Wittgenstein, but he was basically a, a rational philosopher. And you will say that this this. Uh... Let's say this this push or this throwing you things in in, in, in cultural aspect or, or maybe telling you that you the, the way I understand what you said was like okay they told me that if I sit long enough I can do I can I can understand everything that, I want that I can idea learn everything I want. and accomplish yes 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 yeah. that's uh, I get them from then I of course reformulated in my own style but once I got into high school I was convinced that I was I will understand anything everything. Um, this is not true, right? Of course, there are things that I don't understand and they're difficult, but I know if that guy understood it, 
I will understand it. Yeah. Somehow, it will take me longer probably, but why? Well, what? Am, why am I different from someone else? <laughs> Indeed. And, um, and do you think but, what, what? What will you think that actually create if if something did? This passion that you were talking about for for you to learn from lesson. Yeah. Will you say that it was this I this think, idea that your I parents gave you? I think it was. But my parents were very uh, passionate as well, and uh, my dad was passionate mm -hmm. with with the stars, and he was he would when we travel he will point out to things and and he was a philosopher so he was always inquiring about things and what what do you think is more fascinating the the, the mountains or the, the ocean why why do you prefer the mountains versus the oceans or and um so if you're if, so instill or the curiosity and when you're curious is uh you start marveling about everything around you and And uh, the, the scientific program is trying to decipher those those um, uh, subtleties of the world, right? And uh, when I read how other people did it, and then I started reading in high school, the popular scientists were the people that write in the style that I'm trying to write now. I'm writing to myself when I was 13 or 14. And uh, those, those also increased my passion <laughs> in in. Those values, the values of, of permanent things, right? Uh, the values of arts, the poetry, of science, of uh, music. This, this is related with a, a, an amazing, I must say, a very good video that you published some time ago with this 10, 10 advice or, or something like this for uh -huh. students. It was very good. Actually, I will put it now in the link in the video. And uh, one of them was uh, be, be a physicist all the time, right? Exactly. Was, was, was something like this. And, right. Uh, I kind of think that this is going the same line, right? Asking the questions, be curiosity. Yes, you go yes. the mountains or the or the or the, or the sea. Yeah, yeah. Try to really look for for what's what's behind yeah, everything. Absolutely, because we're sort of anesthetized with uh, with the things that we see all the time, and we forget that they are fascinating and miraculous, right? Or at least super super interesting. I mean, we cannot live if we don't if we. If, if we go to the to work and we stop under every tree and think, well, look yeah. at the miracle of photosynthesis that yeah. that have be, that made this tree out of air, yeah. right? And but but I always think that way, right? So I try to. Um, and how how do you, because I I remember I remember myself as a child doing doing questions and things, but I used to get very frustrated. I must say because I just couldn't find explanation. I couldn't explain things to myself at, at the time. So. How do you deal with, with that? Well, I can imagine it was the same for you, I, I believe. Uh, it was exactly the same. Yeah. And, and that's why I included in, in one of my lists um, something that I learned. Um, uh, I, was, I got frustrated and uh, but I somehow keep, kept going. And, uh, and you too, because otherwise you wouldn't be there and I wouldn't be here. And, um, but um, in one of these advices that I give is to try to develop a tolerance to partial understanding. Because uh, so if you understand completely, don't get frustrated, keep going, keep reading the same article, then things will coalesce over time. Uh, so, yeah, and when you were a child, you just get frustrated until you realize that this was. Uh... Yeah, so I, kept, <laughs> so I, I was, I, I, I would, uh, I was stubborn. So I would keep going, keep going. Of course, I was subscribed to Scientific American when I was a kid and I was in high school. And there are lots of articles I didn't understand let alone the articles of, with experiments that they needed elements that were impossible to get in, in Tucumán. So there were things that you would get here in, in the U.S., um, but uh, it was very, very difficult to... Experiments that were difficult to replicate. But then uh, conceptually, I, also, I was also frustrated to some extent. And, uh, but somehow I kept going, and I'm, I'm, still, I'm still halfway, <laughs> of course. Indeed. Indeed. Well, and, and one, one question I have also is that what did you what did you actually apply with, with your education of your own kids, right? Yeah, I tried I tried the same method and it quite it worked in a different way because they were growing in a different culture, different exposed to different things. But I applied the same method and to motivate them and inspire them in trying to do as much uh, so my my, my son also always tells me that when he wrote a 
he wrote good things about your parents he says he always told me that i was a genius <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that's probably not good right <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a brute force method but he's doing fantastically well okay right? so there must be some some correlation so, there the and, uh, <laughs> so it's not it's a it's kind of competitive sport sporty kind sporty this it's kind of a sports point of point of view but but I think you have to be convinced that you're capable. You have to believe in yourself and try to live your own life. And I'm proud that my kids didn't follow my same path. One is sociology is, of course, similar. It's, she's a PhD in sociology, teaches in college, and my, my son is in economics. So, but they had the style. See, I think, of course, they have the influx from both parents. My wife also has her own style. And, uh, and then... Coming to your, your as a teenager, I guess you keep on reading, you keep on playing music, you keep on yes. or starting developing this this curiosity and, and passion for for nature, for understanding. And how is that you you start? So you, how is that you at some moment decides what well, I want? I want to go for physics, and not for guitar for for music. Or yeah, no, I, I consider it and, uh, the life as a musician. To me, didn't mm -hmm. look. Uh, like the life that I wanted to pursue and mostly because um, I, I wanted to do science and I wanted to do music. And I decided at some point that it would be helpful to do professionally. I mean, I could do professional music without a, a formal training, without a PhD, or at least the kind of music that I wanted to do. It took me years to also study that music, the, the, the process. And uh, and I saw that it was important that the existence of this, this our institute, the Instituto Valcedo, was for me important. I mean, it's crucial that that institution existed because that said, okay, we have a first class institution in the, in the country that I, where I can study physics at the best level. And uh, I didn't see something equivalent to music. That I'm thinking now, um, but I said, I, I said, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna study physics, but I'm not gonna abandon the other things. I mean. Choosing physics to me was one, one way of studying something that I liked, but as a path in parallel with other paths that I wanted to, um, to pursue intellectually, right? So I didn't, it's not that I, I wanted to be only, or just this, this path. It's for an education. It's like a course in something that you take as an enrichment. Of course, I, I, did, I did very seriously and I, it makes my living now, but but it's not the only thing, right? It's, um, mm. <laughs> it's the only thing that I did along the usual. Yeah, the, the formal, the the formal, formal education, education and, the PhD and, and professor. So basically at, at that time you say, well, I, I do want to, 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 to understand. I want to study physics. Yes. I, I also want to do physics. music and art, but I know that I need a formal education in order to be able to, to do. Yes, to, 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 do physics, have, to look the, for a voice, right, yes. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought I could find a voice in, in music um, by myself. And um, probably if I had done, done a more formal music education, I'd be in a different path in producing different different works. But I kept practicing and writing when I was a student in Bariloche. In fact, the first song that I recorded was Mercedes. I composed it in Bariloche when I was a student. Really? And really... I played with her 20 years later. So, so yeah. As a student with the, with Jackson yes. on the other hand. And... Yes, yes, I was, I was, I, I was Jackson here. And, <laughs> and this, in this, in this life, student, well, if, if I did the math right, you, you were basically a student, a university, university level student, uh, doing one of the most bloodiest dictatorships in Latin America, in Argentina, right? Yes. In 76, yes. uh, 82. Yes. Uh, yes. So I can imagine that your period as a student, as, as a in Balsedo Institute, the, the, the year or two years that you probably did in Tucumán, in Tucumán and the, uh, your, your PhD in Bariloche as well, right? Um, yeah, the PhD was, a, I, when I got into in Bariloche, it was about the end of the dictatorship. Ah, okay. How, how was your, your, this, this period for you uh, as a student? You really suffered this. Yes, yes, yes. It was, uh, of course, I was productive. I was able to learn, play music. But, uh, but uh, I, it was a period of my life that I was, I had left wing ideas and uh, I collaborated with some of them, uh, with some people. So I was 
afraid and I was young enough that I wouldn't, that was not put in jail, but I was right there and borderline age-wise and some of my friends disappeared. So it was a, it was, it was, um, a scary way of, uh, I don't have my memories. Make, I have great memories from my classmates, from some of my teachers, but the, the principal of the, my, my school was, was put by the military. He was very, um, it, it, was, it was not a good time at all, right? Then yeah, this has to, maybe to put in context all the in context all the people. This was uh, uh, um, ideological persecution, civilians being disappeared without an explanation, and people finding yes. dead anywhere. It was really traffic tragic for, for for the history of the country. Yes, and uh, Tucumán in particular, and in particular in Tucumán, exactly in your, your homeland. Yeah. Guerrillas were uh, very active there, and the repression was very strong. And um, And then the Malvinas War came, and that was that was even worse because I was against it, and a lot of people were in favor, and so it was. Uh, yeah, this is a war between Argentina and, and, and the UK right. uh, for for the yeah. Malvinas Island. I will say I will not say yeah. for Canaries, <laughs> but uh, but yes, this that's also all, all at, at the time. But even even during this really hard context, that uh, that yes, this generation had to live. Um, mm -hmm. what, what actually was 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 really lighting your your days, your motivation every day? What were your mentors in those in those in, in those years? Well, in, in well, I had some great teachers in in, in high school, other than my parents, of course, and then in Bariloche when I went in Tucumán as well. In, in, in there were a couple of professors, Constantino Grosse, that I really liked. Um, then in Bariloche, I had a lot of professors that. Um, That made an impact on me. Reto Martinez was a guy that did. Um, he was also a popularizer of science, a great cook, a, a great guy, very very curious. And he died relatively young, but he he was an influence. Blas Alasio was my mentor as a as a my PhD mentor. He was a supervisor. He was a he was a great guy. He taught me to to explain with the fingers. That was his uh, his way of uh, of saying it in trying to find the simplest way of explaining things to someone that is not an expert. And even to the experts, to still the idea to the basic elements and try to communicate them. So the idea of communicate them, the, the notions, it, it, it comes from Blas and from Carlos Valsera, which was also an influence to me, and closer in generation. And, and he has also the imprint of his father who, uh, who created, who founded the institute where, where we studied. And uh, mm -hmm. so those are people then that, that, that were important for me. And then when I went, came to the States, I also met a lot of colleagues that were um, inspiring. Uh, Tony Leggett was very influential on my way of thinking things. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to me that one of the good things that I, I did, and I realized I'm not, I'm not alone, is that you have to associate with people that are clever than you are. So that's it's it's um, that's a good thing, and uh, that's that that played well to me that to talk and collaborate with people that are smarter, <laughs> or you at know, least this, in some scale. This takes me to one to one question I had for you because I remember you 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 told me once that you actually took lessons of guitar at different different periods of your life, right? And it was, yes. and at least for me. This is, a, I believe, a very, very silly idea, but it was, it was on me at least. I felt that when I finished university, th then it was my own, right? That I should learn by my own or with discussions with colleagues. But, but in a way, uh, I think that identifying that, that, that you, need, you need to go into a learning process with someone and you need to say, okay, I need to learn. I need to take someone that can take me to the next level or teach me something that is, is, is something I believe we should do, that we should try to identify. And, In your life, even as a musician or, or as a researcher, how do you identify this point? We say, okay, I need to get someone that helped me to go faster or to, or to go to the next level. This is more or less what I can get by my own. Well, that's the part that I didn't do quite well because I think you have one has to find mentors and teachers and people to talk very early in the process. Uh, it's so I did find and I looked for them, and now that I'm starting a few years ago, this new thing about painting and learning how to draw and paint. I very early try to find people that would uh, 
critique my work or tell me things or uh, guide me. Uh, because when you are self-taught, which has happened to me for the guitar, with the guitar in the few in the first few years, or uh, when you're self-taught, you have a teacher that's pretty ignorant, right? So, <laughs> and the, so it's better to find. It, it's important to talk, right? To in general, but in particular when you're learning, it's very important. It's not that I adhere so much of, of a, I like the idea of the atelier, the old idea of the atelier, that when you go and paint with, and there's a, one person that is looking at your work and telling you things. And so for me, it was important. I translated to current times by taking lessons with individual people that I really admire. And uh, it was probably two lessons of one hour each or two hours each. And that gave me, gave me work for six months, right? And then I find someone else and, uh, and that changed my, my playing. And then collaborating with people is also very important. We know that in science, but it's important in every field. Even if you're a soloist, if you're a single author, but showing your work, discussing your work, having shown work from others and giving fit feedback, it's uh, everything is social. I don't think we can live in, I don't understand how Van Gogh did it, but I think he was also connected to things, right? And uh, Kafka was also connected to things. But uh, I'm thinking of authors that weren't famous or discovered or uh, from in their, in their times. But, uh, but uh, finding someone that will help you develop your ideas or... In physics, I had it because I was a student. So I have always teachers, right? But in things that you want to accomplish by your own, like writing or, in my case, painting or playing an instrument, uh, it was very important to find people that would help you. You did something you did early in your career. That's yes, and you have to try to find. You have to be You have to be proactive. Open for yeah, looking for this and knocking doors and insisting people to teach you. Someone, some people that you admire are very busy or or they're so you have to be you have to insist there. But I did. I you know, keep doing it. That, that, that is super interesting and uh, and I think it's a it's a great lesson for for younger people let's say to yes, to, yes. to do that to push forget uh, yes. to insist and, and to knock doors and, and to people yes. that you want to learn from something yes. that is is interesting and I really wanted to ask you is that at least from my point of view we we learn in in the development of our careers and I'm not necessarily talking about success the development of our careers uh, we we learn a lot from our own mistakes right maybe we most learn from mistakes more than more than actually things that weren't right right so what what, what is your, what are your lessons learned in your in your professional life so far what would you say what would you do differently if you if you would go back to pac uh, in your professional life well i i think in some cases i'll be more patient you have to be patient and uh Sometimes I was impatient. I wanted quick results, or um, I actually love the way things came out. So um, if I had to do things again, I would still study physics. I would still do music the way I did and uh, um, modify certain things about the personality. Sometimes I was too impatient and, or uh, intolerant with uh, uh with colleagues or um so being more i mean it, it's all the, the only thing that i would change is being spiritually more more open right i mean it's more modest in terms of opens to ideas opens open to ideas with and, yourself right yes and uh yeah you have to uh the idea of, of course it's very difficult to develop to be in in careers without having a, a big ego right so Uh, believing in yourself is something that you have to have. Uh, otherwise, you would. As I was, this is a corollary of, of everything we've been saying. But at the same time, you have to be modest, very modest, right? At the same time, you have to be able to absorb and tolerate that things are not exactly the way um, you want them to be. This is the ambiguous part. I. Things that I don't know if I regret, but I think that I might do the same uh, differently is play the system more, right? And I, I have a big, well, it, 
it's I, I never played the system in a way that um, I'm just saying that I could have there's a path to success in the in, in a more conventional thing way that has to do with um, doing things that you're not very comfortable with but you're happy with the result right or where you want to be and, yeah I see uh, what you mean yeah and um, and that are borderline challenges to your ethical principles. But sometimes you, if you want to get to certain places, you have to play certain. That's games a certain. Way. That's a yeah. short, the shortest path. Yeah. So I said, well, let me see if I can get there without doing that, and it's very difficult. <laughs> and um, uh, that's something that I didn't do, and I don't know if I would do it again. But sometimes I think I would like to be in uh, in certain places that I am not, for not having played that. But uh, um, but at the same time, I'm very happy with my results. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the um, so there there is the thing about procrastination and doing things that it, it connects to some extent with your question, and with my idea of how do I do things efficiently, and it's that. There's your present self and there's the future self, right? And we tend to think as the future self as a stranger, right? And so that's why, and, and even there's experiments, right? And you, 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 of course, you know your present self you, as yourself, but when you cognitively, when you think of yourself in the future, you don't think much of yourself as, as the present. So, uh, Procrastination apparently is this thing about thinking of your future self as a stranger and not caring much about the future and thinking about the <laughs> present self. Now, if you think about the future about as a friendly person as yourself, then you start yeah. doing things now because you're sacrificing your present in favor of that. In the, because you care about that that future you. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So in, I there are parts in my and I have to pinpoint exact certain certain moments that I think probably a better decision would have been this thing and not this other thing, right? Like, uh, yeah, and when I was a postdoc in Chicago, I could I went back to Argentina and then I, I could have stayed there. And these are minuscule things that are very peculiar to my path, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't think lessons that are applicable to others um, for my own mistakes. I, I don't think I made huge mistakes. That's the thing. And in this line, what would you say, if you have two minutes or one minute, what would you say to, if you could time travel and face Alberto Rojo when he was 20 years old, what would you tell him? Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if I'm answering the question now, so sometimes I feel, uh, I, I did my own analysis a few years ago and said, what would you, what were you, what would you dream me? Or what was your, if I think of, um, if I were going, if I were to send a letter to him, mm -hmm. uh, says what you're dreaming now, it's going to be better than what you're really dreaming, right? Things are going to be much better than what you think. Because there are things that happened to me that I didn't even dream, right? Or there were parts of, of, of dreams that um, that uh, that I'd even that that would if I tell you that something wonderful is going to happen to you, you'll be skeptic. All right. As I would example, I was in Argentina when I when I was a student. I wrote this Chacarera when when I was. Of course, this could, could be if we commensurate with my, with the dimensions of my dream because I I didn't have the dream of creating the worldwide web or the biggest company in the world or being a Picasso, right? I have certain ideas of improving myself and uh, that somehow in some of these avenues, I went beyond what I thought I wanted to do or I dreamt to be. So I, when I was write this, wrote this song, I said, I, uh, my wife said, oh, this would be a nice song for Mercedes to sing it, Mercedes Sosa. And I said, yeah, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, well, but. <laughs> of course, it's, why did Paul McCartney come to dinner and we play? I said, yeah, of course, it's a dream. And then 20 years after that, I was recording it with her. Talking and you, and you became a friend with her. We became friends and we were, we were uh, 
so that was kind of uh, out of out of nothing and i was it was uh, uh of course i i i, I um I worked to to get there but um under a circumstance that 20 years before i was thought of it as um, un, unfathomable or a, not not um yeah very unreal to some extent and then with, i mean i didn't get the nobel prize but i worked with someone that was very very good and uh think that i would when i was in high school that i would be collaborating on a first name basis and and peer to peer with a nobel laureate and um he was not a laureate at that at that time but he was very prominent at that time and it was to me well well look at this i'm i'm writing a paper a two author paper with someone that's with someone that went a caliber and, and so what i'm doing is good and uh and it was a really really a pleasure to to do that you no know? um but um I think we can always be more ambitious, um, uh, but uh, so you know. Every time I, high, I would tell my myself, uh, keep what, aiming. What, sorry, what will you say? Keep aiming high. Keep aiming high. Yes, nice, very nice. You know, every time I be modest and keep aiming high. Be a little more modest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every time I I take the plane out of Argentina, there's this place in Ezeiza that has a the drawing of Mercedes Sosa. Yeah, Carlos world. Alonso. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And and I always remind reminds me of you that uh, you, you go again, Alberto. That you say otra vez te vas, Alberto. That you used to say. Yes, she, yes, she yes. yes. You. She always. I would call her every time I I would leave the Argentina. I would call her to say goodbye and say otra vez te vas. Yeah, yeah. But this yeah. this drives me to my next question because I was um, basically in your life both as you mentioned, scientific and as a musician and composer, you basically had the chance to live, to be friend, to work, to tour with, with epic, epic people in music and, and in, your, in, in, in science. I know probably there's a lot, but if you, if you have to say, well, this is what I got from this person and this is what I got from this other person in the way they see, because you don't become a first class professionally, whatever you do, just because of talent. Th that normally doesn't happen. You need much more than that. So I can imagine that having the chance to, to be face-to-face -face or side-by-side -side with, this, with these monsters of, of, that, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the area, you might have, have, have learned something. Say, okay, oh, from Mercedes Sosa, I, I took this. From Pedro Aznar, I took this. From Charlie Garcia, I took this. From um, Anthony, I took this. Will, will you identify two, two things out of? Well, uh, I'm gonna say from Tony, I, mm -hmm. I, uh, it was incredible because I admire and admired and admire him. He's a very intuitive person, and and uh, but at the same time, he was very happy when I showed him wrong in some. I mean, he would we were developing a theory together, and and you proved him wrong in his his thing. Yeah, I proved his, and he was he was so thrilled. That I found the solution that was contradicting him, and uh, and I said, "Wow, this guy is a, is a giant." And uh, and I, I so it was minor, but it ended up being the core of our paper. Then and, and uh, this um, openness to being wrong, right? And even the thrill of uh, of being challenged, and which you don't, you it's just the opposite, as you see in politicians. He didn't want to be right. <laughs> Yeah. He wanted the truth, right? Yeah. It's not important to being right. It's important to look for the truth. And if I'm wrong, oh, that's interesting. It's funny. I was wrong. Nice, right? No, it's uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I would. I'd like to see that in more often. And I think that's one of the pleasures of doing science with, with great people. That uh, they even when they when you prove them wrong, in and the wrongness is enriching. They there is a spark. Because it moves you to an, in another direction, right? Then you are moving together in the same direction, in the more searching and pursuing the truth. Uh, with Mercedes, it was a different experience because it was a close friendship, and uh, and I learned how clever she was in this thing about being extremely talented. Ex if if we believe in talent, <laughs> but she was very clever in as a careerist also in choosing and uh, from her i learned i took and i assimilated 
two things. One is that she it was she was like a, I mean she was a close friend, but the same thing with my parents. He would try to convince me. He would tell me that I was good. You have to convince yourself. This is your thing. You have to be a musician. You have to be an artist. And uh, and I also learned get got from her this this cleverness in in redesigning her career, right? In cost, changing her repertoire, inviting people, being associated with different genres because she start, she started as a full fledged folklore Argentinian popular music, but then she incorporated other styles from rock, from jazz, from uh, tango. She explored uh, different avenues and. Uh, that really enriched her here i mean her, her breath as a, as a musician and so and i still hear listen to her encouraging me and that's one thing that i that really kept from um, so from pedro and your, pedro yeah. is another guy that i mean we're close friends so it, it's different from charlie with charlie i haven't i have played with him a few times but and, with but let, let me say something i always have admired pedro because of he started really young because he was he was yes. talented he was really good with seru giran the one of them yeah, yeah very important prior, prior to band. that he has your own bands right in uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and then he, he developed his own career. He went to study after Seru Shiran, if I get this right. Huh? Yes. And then perfect. he actually developed his own career. And now he, he produces, he, he's, he's completely yes. active. Yes, yes, he's incredible. And, um, and for, for him, I learned a the different way of doing, uh, of conceiving music. And he's, he's like a scientist. He's very obsessive with detail and uh, very professional in creating his own work. And, so working with him, I'm, st I'm still, and now I'm, we're working together like peers. He allows me that, but um, but the first time he was, it was a very a learning experience to work hand in hand with him because he knew all the process of uh, of of creating something at a professional level that hadn't worked before, and um, so a certain alertness to detail to to things that uh, he showed me a different layer of uh, like. And a different pixel level of the screen of music. Hmm. Uh, I went from low D to HD after, after working <laughs> with him. Yeah, so that was, and, you, and you keep on working with him. You yes, say, we're composing working, together composing. and we're writing. And yes, we, we have a few songs together now that we, we're still nice. going to release. Yeah. Impressive. And that's an honor to me that he. Well, I, there's I, are songs, I, I there's imagine, songs yeah. Where, so, so songs that are in, scientifically inspired that ones because he also has an, incl an inkling for for science so he is uh, he's interested in quantum physics and, and just... he's a curious person the same as you yeah <laughs> yeah and so we we interact and uh it's 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 very mutually very i mean it's a cross fertilization thing cross pollination Yes. We have two more questions for you, okay. and then <laughs> I let you go. Um, once I start to, to someone starting her his or her career, uh, what what books will you recommend? And I know it's a very difficult question for you. I know, but what what books will you maybe not a quantum mechanics books, but in terms of in physics? Of, uh, no, no, maybe not in physics a specific, but in terms of someone from any professional actually starting the career as a professional. What are the books that you will say? Well, I would suggest you read this one. Or I, mean, I don't know, but um, of course, I'm more familiar with books that are scientific. If you're starting a career, but I, I think Feynman reading the character of physical law, for example, or or Richard Dawkins, uh, the, the selfish gene. Those authors are to me, uh, or Carl Sagan. Um, those are authors that that very go to the deepest part of science, and they're committed to science, no BS, right? Uh, so physics, if you if you if you want to read the, the best physicist in in terms of his communication style, his passion, and his no, his no nonsense style, read Feynman, QED, or the character of physical law, or some of his uh, books. Not not so not so much the biographical books, which are very popular, and you could read them. But uh, the ones that I prefer more are the books when he talks about science. Um, uh, then Einstein's the the principle uh, because he talks science about science in general, right? Not 
he teaches you some physics there, but it's about the process, about mm -hmm. the, the search for uh, um, this cumulative consensus that's accumulate that 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 that, that grows over time, uh, which is the, the cert that thing what I call truth is a scientific is is what is incorporated by science. And, and Richard Dawkins in The Selfish Gene or some more recent writings of Richard Dawkins, pick something by Richard Dawkins, pick something by Richard Feynman, pick something by Carl Sagan. Uh, um, and those are things that will definitely inspire you to become. And then of course, careers is a broad thing, but pe people would prob probably, someone would say, read Stephen Jobs biography or, or people that are very, influential in other aspects of another model that I didn't pursue and I'm not as interested, but are fascinating paths, right? How Stephen Jobs or uh, uh, people that, uh, that have very interesting lives. The ones that inspired me are those. And what will you say to, as, as to close this interview to, to, to young people? What will you say? Follow your people... passion, live your own life, uh, do what do with uh, it's a, it's 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 a short life, <laughs> and it's a beautiful world, and there are lots of things to do. And, and do what you like. Um, don't don't think. Of course, it's very easy to say, but but I think devoting your life to someone that will only make a living for you, and if that that's not the best way of spending your time on Earth, I uh, think. Uh, you have to to learn to like things that are interesting and and and, and do that and that because uh, yeah that's 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 my advice and uh, each person has their own circumstance their own interests their own but you you have to follow your passion i, th I don't think there's a way out of that in order to to be happy right because after all we whatever happiness is, there's a, a state of mind that is sort of in harmony with the, with the rest of the world, with the surrounding, with the other people. And that and you get to that point when you, when you do what you like to do. So that's, mm, uh, indeed. Well, Alberto, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure for you. me to, it's an to, honor to, to talk with you. To have included me in this series. No, not at all. Thank you very much uh, for, for your time.